friends, here's Madame OK. Welcome to my channel and thank you so much for being a part of it. If you enjoy watching the videos, please, please, please don't forget to subscribe as well as to hit the like button. Thank you so much and see you soon. Bye! Hello guys, here's Madame OK and today I will show you how to draw the beautiful Alberta's landscape in one point perspective. So let us start with establishing the line. And that will be the line that will divide the field from the sky. Since I want to have a little bit more of the field here, I will create, let's see, one third, I will leave for the sky and two thirds for the uh, ground. Now, um, I will do it the way I do it right now, but um, you can simply measure the distance on both sides and then with the ruler, with help of the ruler, you can create the line. Fantastic. So now I will establish a vanishing point uh, that is necessary to create one point perspective. In this point is super important. It represents where we are standing or our position to view this particular scene, as well as exactly the position of our eyes in this spot. The next step is to simply establish lines, uh, points, I'm sorry, on our lines of the field. And now notice a very important part. We will create the field or different plots of the field. All what you have to do, we have to refer to this vanishing point, which I right now mark with V1. You don't need to do it. And then I will place my ruler on those two points. One on the line dividing land from the sky and one of the vanishing point. Now I can lightly create the line connecting vanishing point with the point on the ground, but it's just not even necessary. I just will do it for you to see it. This line could be a little bit stronger. So you see, whoop, we have the first one. I will show you now how to create the second line and the other ones. Voila. So this time, notice, um, this uh, this connection doesn't need to be even represented. We just have to know that it will be there. Now, guys, we move to another point. And you can, again, get up to you where you place those points, right? You can put more, less of them. They can be in the same distance from each other. They don't need to be. So, again, notice there will be a line that will continue on the part belonging to the field this we will have another one here and notice there's even another point here what we have we have fantastic field on the right side of those different plots now we have ourselves on this left side as well mm -hmm. is there another point oh yeah maybe it's a little bit lower Okay. If I want to, I can also bring another point here and then create more of the fields. I don't, well, maybe, maybe just for our own interest. So you see now I can decide if I think that I want to break a part of the field. Voila. Yeah. The next step will be to work on the clouds. Okay. So I'll create really big clouds on the top of the sky. I will draw big clouds on the top of my sky. It's the second Draw of the clouds is those clouds are smaller than the big ones on the top. I would even make it bigger. And then the third row, even smaller. And of course, we don't need to have so many clouds. This is only for us to better comprehend the idea how to create depth in the drawing. You can see already that the clouds are bigger coming to the edge and smaller going to the line dividing sky from the field. Well, now we want to have a couple of houses and some number of trees, bushes. So remember, the smaller the objects will be on this line, the greater the depth of space, right? So maybe a small house, maybe a barn even, right like here, should be okay. Another house. So something is happening here. We don't even know exactly. We don't need to put too much, right? Like this. I like the chimney with the smoke. So I will allow myself to represent the smoke 
coming out of the chimney and following one direction. Notice, you can't put smoke in one direction on one house and on the other house in another one. That would not make logical sense. So be aware of it. Now, all what you have to do is to choose the colors that we want to use. So I have two blues that will help me to create interesting sky. One will be darker, one will be lighter. If you notice that your pastels are dirty, then make sure that you have a piece of paper. Kleenex would be okay too. And just clean them up in it. So to make it even easier, first I will establish the clouds. Because remember, it's much harder to go with white on something darker. Notice also that the paper that I'm using for this drawing is a butcher paper or brown paper. And I use it on purpose because I want to make sure that even when there will be some spaces left between the strokes of my pastel, is, there still will be a color. This brown color just fits nicely anything what we want to draw. So not I put a little bit of this flesh color a little bit on the bottom of the clouds. Just a tiny bit to make them more colorful. You don't need to do it. I like to do it. Just want to have more colors and maybe even a little bit of yellow. I also like that the brown will pick through the application of the pastels. If you don't have pastels at home, then you can use pencil crayons and make sure that the paper will be of either white or very light off-white color, like Naples or light, light yellow or any other one. Um, you know what I also like to use? I like to use a little bit of gray. So a little bit on the bottom of my clouds, still adding tiny bit of colors. That looks really good. And now it's time for us to move to the sky color. And I will use the trick. Notice I can just use one color and that should be okay. However, here I want to use two colors. I will use the lighter blue color on the bottom and of the sky and darker going up, up, up. So that's my idea, and I will blend them a little bit. There where there will be connection between both of them. And then I will use the darker blue. And this will create such a nice uh, movement of the sky. This will bring this top part closer to us. Then you can present the smoke coming from the chimneys. Take it more here. Touch more there. Really making those clouds moving. A bit of less of paint here. Now the smoke. Smoke. And the smoke perfect with the house if you notice that you can't do a good job because the surface is such a small one use pencil crayons right Good, we have some contrast. Now the time to work on the field. And then, since we talk about Alberta, we want to have canola field.
good. Now the other one could be maybe purple. I think purple would be good, especially when you have yellow next to it. So this looks really, really good. Now, the color that we have brown would be okay, but we need something brighter here. And uh, you know what? Because we have blue on the top, I would use a little bit of orange here. And then I want to have my mustard color. Maybe even brown. The lines have to be covered. Or maybe yellow even. I think that doesn't need to go symmetrical. I can decide what I want to have where. Maybe this color will slightly get lighter. Okay, I like it more like this. So that means I add the yellow ochre on my mustard color there too. Very good. Now I want to slightly change the stripes. have our lovely drawing completed. Let's see if we can add something here. I still think that we can just put the last touches there where we have the clouds. Oh, just a tiny bit adding, changing, even with this color. Down here and there. Very good. So I hope you enjoyed working with me on this project and now you are ready to work on your own. Don't forget that I used the pastels oil. You can use also chalk pastels. And if you don't have neither oil or chalk pastels, you can rely on pencil crayons or color pencils. Even if you don't have color pencil, you can still use wonderful markers. So have a good day and uh, see you working on another project together next time. Bye-bye.